Good evening, everyone. I'm your food and beverage madam, Madam Deborah Mara, and today we're going to talk about alcoholic beverage, which is wine. We have many, a lot of alcoholic beverages, but today we're just going to talk about wines. So, what is this about wines that we have to know about? Let's follow up in a moment. Beverages, wines. So, at the end of this lesson, the learner should be able to define the term wine, classify wines, state the characteristics of wines, state methods of testing wines, state the faults found in wines, know how to read wine labels. So, when this lesson ends, you must make sure as a learner to be able to def to know all this. Okay? Okay. Now, first topic is wines, that is definition of wines. We're told wine is made from ripe grapes. Can be red grapes or white grapes. The red grapes make the red wine. That is, when you're making the wine, you make it together with the skin. to make it red, dark red. And the white grapes make the white wine. So the white wine, the skin, is removed. So only the white fruit inside the grape is used. So what are wines? Introduction. Wine is an alcoholic beverage obtained from the fermentation of juice of a freshly gathered grapes. Where are they gathered? Grapes are derived from a vineyard. Okay? From a vine in a vineyard. So grapes are from a vineyard. Remember vineyard in the Bible, the story of Naboth? Yes. Now, where that is where grapes come from. And the classification of wines. We have four classification of wines. Some books say five classification of wines, but this we have four classification of wines. One is still wines, sparkling wines, fortified wines, and aromatized wines. Four classification of five. In a, if in an exam you ask five name, list or name, five classification of wines, you name the four, and the fifth one will be bitters. Okay? I'll tell you more about bitters in our next class. So today we're going to read about the four classification of wines. Now we're going to start with the steel wines. What are steel wines? Steel wines, they lack carbonation. They lack carbonation. You know what is carbonation? Carbonation is like when you're opening Coke. When you're opening Coke, Coca-Cola, and the fizzing, the bubbling that comes out. Now these steel wines, they lack carbonation. As the name suggests, steel. They're just steel. Now we have three types of steel wines. Red wines, rosé wines, and white wines. So see red wines, how they look? They're red. Rosé wines, mostly used in parties. They're about pink, and most of them, they're sweet. White wines, white wines are served cold, while red wines are served at room temperature. No escapes. See, rosé wines can be served at any temperature. Okay? Then we go to the next one. Sparkling wine. The next one is sparkling wine. Sparkling wines are wines made by the method called Methode Japanese. Methode Japanese. For example, champagne. Some people say champagne, but it's champagne. You know why it's sparkling? When you open cork, it comes with a sound. You know, like the pop sound of opening champagne. Mostly, sparkling wines like champagne are called celebration wines. They use during celebrations only most of the times, like in parties, birthdays, okay? And when serving wines, we serve wines in cute glasses, very different glasses, like, and like when you're serving juices, you only use tumbler or the island glasses. So when serving wines, we have different types of wines, wine glasses, like the flute, the tulip, wine glass, the pot for, for serving pot. Now, when they ask you why the wine glasses are shaped that way, why they have a handle, why they have a round mouth which is smooth and soft, I will give you the reason. Why it does why it has a handle is because you can you, you don't want to change the temperature of the wine. So you hold the wine in the handle. Why it has a small mouth, small mouth for drinking, that is because to preserve the bouquet of the wine. Okay? Many more we list them during our next class. Next is the fortified wines. What are fortified wines? Are wines strengthened by the addition of alcohol 
usually grape spirit. The grape spirit can be added during or after fermentation. Those are fortified wines. So we have examples in that infographic. We have an example of fortified wines. For example, of sherry, port, madeira, masala, vermouth, and muscat. Yeah, you, you can see where they, they're made in the, in the infograph below. Those are fortified wines. Next, we have the aromatized wine. Aromatized wine. Just as the name suggests, they've been aromatized. They've been added some flavor. Added an ingredient to make it different from the other. So these are flavored and fortified wines. The flavoring agents are almonds, quinine, orange. You can also add some vanilla, somehow some lemon. Okay? It can depend with the one who makes. They're all flavored and fortified. But that does not mean they're sweet. They can be sweet or dry. Okay? So, for example, we have Angostura bitters. Angostura bitters, mostly, they use it when you are treating... Well, in the restaurant, when a customer says they have a stomach upset, yeah, you, you take just one tablespoon of Angostura, you add in warm water, you give the guest, and the pain will reduce. Yeah, but if the pain goes, uh, goes further, you tell the guest to seek for further medical checkup. We even have Jagermeister. Jagermeister is mostly used in making cocktails. So those are the aromatized wines. What else about this wine? Now you're going to see about the characteristics. On our learning out outcome three, we're looking at the characteristics of wine. So what are these characteristics of wines? Let's check. I hope you're understanding up to there. Characteristics of wine. One, appearance and color. What about the appearance and color? The appearance should be bright. And the color, if it's red, it's red. If it's rosé, it should be pinkish. If it is white, it is not white like paper, but white over wine. The bouquet, the bouquet means the aroma, the scent of the of the of the wine. The test, the test will be specific. When testing wine, they have a specific test of wine. Aging potential. You see, the older the wine, the better the test. So, wines, they have aging potential, they age, and when they age, they become better. Full-bodied or light-bodied, sweet or dry. Sweet, I told you, sugary, dry, no sugar at all. Yeah, then, on um, the learning outcome 4, we are going to learn about testing of wines. How do we test wines? Method of testing wine. We test wine using our senses. The first sense is sight. Then smell, then test. When you're presenting a wine to a guest, first you present the bottle. So the, the guest sees the bottle, says, yes, this is what I have ordered. Then you serve it in a glass, the sampling glass. Then you add a little. Then you give the guest. The guest swells it, swells the, the glass, and then smells it to get the bouquet, the aroma. After smelling, the guest tests to ensure that this is the right wine I have ordered for, okay? That is simple, right? You can fail that in exam. In our learning outcome five, we're going to talk about faults in wines. Yeah, some wines have faults, some wines have been cooked differently, badly, which, which can be harmful to the guest. So you have to learn about the faults of wine, cooked wine. Oxidation, acidification, tartar flake, foreign contamination, meaning there is something inside the wine, cloudiness, excess sulfur dioxide, those are faults in wine. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to check about this. Let me go back a little. Testing guide. Yeah. These wines, when testing the wine, the wine go are served at a specific temperature and go with specific meat, specific food. So when you're serving a guest, the guest is eating red meat. What will you suggest type of wine should be a red wine? If the guest is eating a white meat, the, the drink suggested should be a white wine. Okay? And temperature, as you said, 
red wine has served at room temperatures and the white wine has served cold. Rosé can be served cold. Sparkling wines, your choice. Room temperature or cold. Okay. Mostly sparkling wine are served during celebrations. Okay, continue. Ah, I have a quote which I like so much. That beer is made by men, but wine by God. You remember wine? Yes. Jesus made wine in a celebration feast. He multiplied the wine and everybody was enjoying the feast. <laughs> beer was made by men, wine by God. <laughs> okay, in learning outcome 6, you're going to learn about reading wine label. So how do we read a wine label? You have an infographic over there which is stating a Cabernet Sauvignon. This is a wine. Then, Sage Valley on the top. Sage Valley is the brand name, brand name of the wine. Cabernet Sauvignon is the wine name. Napa Valley, American culture. So that one is American wealthy culture. The vineyard, the vineyard where the grapes were harvested. That is American agriculture. Then reserve quality designation. Vineyard designation is Sage Valley Vineyard. Red wine is the type of wine. Then bottle information is written down there. Alcohol by volume percentage. You can see 14%. Yes. Now let's look more about reading wine label. Reading wine label. Yeah. Name of the wine. Country where wine was made. If it's in Kenya, Africa. South Africa, the KWV, alcoholic strength by volume, content in liter. So, you, you, so the wine must be indicated 500 ml, 1 liter, name and address of the trademark. And that comes with the end of our topic today. We learned about wines and beverage. Remember, beer is made by men while wine is made by God. Thank you. For participating thank you for watching this video about beverages i'll be posting more videos about alcohol beverages in a short while where there is wine there is a way thank you so much